All right, so on my uh, Jaguar uh, 2000 model XK8, it developed a transmission issue where it has, the code is a P1722, and it developed a situation where when it's cold, it actually changes okay. Once it warms up, it will start uh, falling in and out of gear. It'll slip a little bit, and then it'll go into a transmission fail-safe mode or failure gearbox failure mode and you can't drive it it's got pretty much one gear at that point i suspect a broken drum in the transmission so we're gonna pull the transmission out and and see and i will let you see what we find a 5 hp 24 transmission and it's doing one of those common things that these transmissions appear to do and that is, um, I parked it one day, it was in a parking lot, and when I put it in park, it kind of jumped. The next time I pulled it in gear, it was in first gear, it would kind of slam in, and then it would slip, and I was able to limp it home, but it was in bad shape, and it never really got right, and it did give some codes. But uh, I determined that it was internal in the transmission, and it turns out I was right. I opened it up and found a failure of an A-drum, uh, due to where the retainer ring groove is, it'll actually break off and they have an upgraded uh, A-drum that you can put back in there and that's what I did and here's the video of me doing it. Now here I assume you know how to get the transmission out, but this will help you with repairing the internal parts of the transmission. Stay tuned. Alright ladies and gents, this is what the transmission looks like when you pull it out and on the bell housing you can see it's got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen it's got fifteen bolts sixteen sixteen bolts and this right here is your uh, oil cooler line here this connector the way you undo it is you pull it down and it pops out this one has a piece that you have to pull up and that one will pop out. There's uh, three bolts on the back for the drive shaft and you can see I just leave them sticking in there. Each one of them also have a washer and a nut on this side. Um, the torque converter, as you can see, only has three bolts in it. I did not see a torque converter drain hole even though it has a sight right here. It's not there. This is the other oil cooler line. They were both 19 millimeter. This is how you fill the uh, transmission up, this, this hole right here. You pull that out, you heat the, heat the car up, and that's where you put your transmission fluid in. You do it kind of like a rear end. You keep on putting it in with the thing hot until it comes out. Once it starts coming out, you've got enough in it and you, and you plug it back up. And then you can see it had that wiring thing that mounted right there. Let's look up under here. This is your wiring right here that was hooked to it. There's just a wiring harness. So what I did was pull those two 10 millimeter bolts out. There's the flywheel from the backside. And you can see all I did was drop the exhaust down. There's four bolts in each exhaust. I didn't take it completely down because you'd have to heat it and do stuff on the back. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. So we're gonna open it up and see what we got. And I'm gonna pull the torque converter out first. So we'll get a little fluid when we do that. Yep. Not much. All right, so look at all them bolts in there. That thing's loaded up with, yeah. with bolts. So next we're gonna pull all these bolts out, pop the bell housing off and open it up and see what we got in there. So I wanna show you this before I pull it out. There's six gold color ones. One here, what I did was mark it with my magic marker. There, 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 there. And you can see how I put a mark, 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 mark. I don't know what it is, but I'm assuming these are longer. So we're gonna pull them out and see. All right, so I'm pulling the bolts out. And as you can see, I was right. The gold ones are shorter. The gold ones are shorter than the, the brown ones. So that's the big thing is all these are really long. So just don't get them mixed up. So the gold ones are the short ones. That's why you need to mark it. And of course you can look up in there and see where the threads are, but it's easier to just mark stuff. That way you know what you got and where, where you got it. I didn't even have the camera on. What am I doing? 
just as I was expecting this clutch pack right here to be eaten off on the sides where it threads up in there. So friends, right here is where I got nervous because I thought that's where it was going to be eaten off. It turns out, because I had done research on the internet just like you had and found other people that had a similar issue, turns out it's inside that clutch pack and I find it here in a moment. Just stay tuned. Keep in mind, I've never built a Jaguar transmission before, but I've built Fords for many, many, many years. So I'm just going off of that expertise as far as previous history, but have never seen inside this transmission before. So this is all exploratory. Although I could watch this video and easily build it now. Okay, so the, the one that breaks is up inside here. So I've got to pull this, oh, this snap ring here out. I'm gonna pop this snap ring out. I'm gonna pull this out. ladies and gents this right here is in fact coming apart you can see that there's the pieces to it and it didn't destroy the transmission but it did break apart and what's happening is the fluids leaking past this little thing right here so I'm gonna fix that drum put her back together and I am back in business the key to this is, is when this happens, you don't drive the car far. You stay close or, or stop and have it towed. That's the whole key. And there she is. Okay, so I want to make notes. This came off of the top of that. You can see that this, this drum came off the top of there. This pulled out of the center. And there's a little bearing there. I'm going to stick the bearing there. And then this, I don't know how this comes out of this drum. But that's definitely what's wrong with this car. And I'm going to have to figure out how to get that out. It looks like there's a, yeah, that's a snap ring right there. So it may be, if I pop this snap ring off, snap ring right there ladies and gents that, that snap ring has got to come out <laughs> that thing is under pressure. Wish that may be a booger bear to get back in.
Okay, it just pushes out. So that just sticks through. That was actually under pressure. I probably shouldn't have, shouldn't have taken that off. But you know, you're gonna have to to get it fixed. So, um, but that's definitely it right there, ladies and gents. You can see that, that it's broken the edge off of that right there. It's actually got that piece and what's happening is the fluid is leaking past it. And so one of your signs is if the car is cold and it seems to shift okay, and as it warms up it quits, I think that's your, that's your sign. We'll have to break this little thing here off. That's happened over a period of time. It didn't just happen in one day. to find this. I'm going to make this transmission work. Yes, I can. And you can see how dark those got because this thing was not staying fully engaged. So I'm going to repair this drum or replace it one or the other. Get that done, put this bad boy back together, and I am in business. And the whole key to this is I'm not going to completely rebuild this transmission. I'm going to rebuild this part of the transmission. Okay, there's your there's a seal right there, and that's part of the, the pressure part of it. And when this thing can slip like that, it's allowing this to push out. So there's the, the piston part of it. So this part right here is the part that's bad. It looks like that shaft is made on it. I don't see where it comes off. So. I'm going to replace this part. I'm going to get me a kit with gaskets and stuff to put it back together. I'm going to get me um, uh, friction plates for here. Put this bad boy back together. And I am going to have a car that's more valuable than it was. Hard to sell a Jaguar with a bad transmission. So there you go, ladies and gents. That is the issue. This is the old drum, and you can see where it broke this little edge right here off. And what happens is, when it breaks that edge off, it allows the plates to get sideways, and the um, piston that's down in there, this is not the right piston, but the piston that is down in there will get sideways, and it leaks, and that's why your transmission is slipping. So the new one, uh, that I bought in the kit, you can see it looks different. It doesn't have these little raised things and it's thicker. So that is a problem solver. That solves this for the future so you won't have this issue again. Uh, so now I'm going to put my piston back in. I'm going to have to top load it and get my, um, my snap ring in and then we'll start putting the transmission back together. 
Okay, so right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this gasket peeled off and you can see it's coming off in pieces. So I've gotta get that cleaned up. And I'm not going any further in the transmission than this. I will change these, uh, these plates here and this actually fits into to those plates. Or actually, it goes this way. This, this goes on the bottom, and the part that goes around this fits into the plate. So we're gonna start finishing all this. I'm gonna get my rings on here. You can see, so there's a new part, doesn't have any of these little um, seals and stuff. So I'm gonna get all that in, I'm gonna get all this cleaned up, and then I'll show you how it goes together. So you can see we got hot tubs in here we're working on, but we're fixing this transmission right now. This is the piston that goes inside there. And what happened, like I said, it was able to get sideways so you can actually see that the, the old O-ring got busted. It got pulled in two. So I'm gonna replace the inside O-ring and the outside O-ring. And uh, we're gonna lube it up and put it back in there. And then it has that snap ring. It has this plate right here um, that goes actually on the top. This actually goes below that plate. So that goes in. So I'm going to have to work on this and figure out how this goes together, but I'll let you know. Well, that's any automatic transmission. So this is the A-clutch kit right here, and you can see that it's got the O-ring, the inside, the outside. So I'm going to start replacing all these O-rings here. Okay, so clean this up, of course. Um, here's the O-ring out of the A-clutch kit. You can just slip it on there just like that. Then I'm gonna do the one for the inside right here. And the biggest thing is, is what I'm doing here is not gonna work if your transmission blew up. I mean, if it's just, just destroyed on the inside, you need to completely go through it. Mine was not destroyed on the inside. It's just got a little damage and uh, it didn't fill the pan up with uh, trash. So I'm not gonna spend that time going any further into this, although I do have the parts to do it. I just don't see it. The, the transmission's only got 90,000 miles on it, so I don't see the point. And then this one is a, this actually fits down into that piston. And you can see there's an O-ring here. So I'm gonna clean all these parts up and, and get them all ready. And I used to do transmissions, but I don't have any of my parts anymore, so, or my tools. So I'm gonna have to come up with a, a way of, of compressing this and making it work. Okay, so in this A-clutch kit, there's actually four O-rings. There's one that goes here, there's one that goes there, there's one that goes here. This actually slips inside of here. So you can actually do that and put Vaseline around it so it slides easier. This last O-ring and the fourth one that's in this little kit here, I'm pulling it out, goes here. So it actually goes on, on the other side of this uh, A-drum. I'm gonna slip it up in there and turn it and make sure it's not in. And so I've gotta put one there and one there too. These are probably gonna be split rings instead of O-rings, but they may be real O-rings, we're gonna see. And then this will go inside of here. It just sticks in there and slips in, but I've got to uh, lube it before I push it in there. So I will show you when I get ready. All right, so I'm gonna change these clutch plates. I'm gonna show you the basics of this is, this has a snap ring in it. So all I'm gonna do is just pull the snap ring out. I'm not going <clears throat> any further than this, this little setup right here into the transmission because I don't think the rest of the transmission is damaged. Um, it's pretty clean and you can see all, of, all it is is clutch plates and these clutch plates are a little bit dark but they're not destroyed and what that's from is when that piston was messed up it created a situation with these so what I'm going to do is um, change these plates and you can see that there's an extra plate on the bottom so that goes back in and you're going to reuse that. And then it's metal friction, metal friction, metal friction, metal friction. Or um, actually, the very top one, there's a, you see that that plate is thicker. 
that's the one that goes on the outside so I'm gonna pull my plates together and replace these real quick and then we're gonna start building the rest of it going back all right so I found them in the kit and what you've got is you've got that that small plate that looks like a little wave washer it goes in here first then this plate goes next then you do a friction let me count how many frictions there are here on this particular one there's one two three four frictions so we're going to do that's friction that's metal then three more frictions friction metal friction come on metal one more friction metal I mean the top plate is going to be this thicker one um, it's thicker than the rest of them so you wouldn't replace that what you would do with this is just make sure that it's not beveled and just simply flip it over and so that's what I did so it should be that my snap ring will go right back in here and you want the snap ring opening to be at the bottom so the fluid can move through the transmission so all I'm going to do is just put my my snap ring started back in there just like this and where I'm doing this in here is not ideal I'm in my repair shop for hot tubs so this is not the, the most ideal setup but you can see that my snap ring went right back in there and now you've got a little bit of play in there and that's the way you want it to be and you can try to line these up now when you start pushing it together and you push the drum in there it'll actually line them up so that's that part now I'm gonna start working on the other parts all right so I've got my new o-ring inside there I've got this pushed in and I'm gonna all I want to do is just take a little little Vaseline you don't have to put much you just want it to be slick you don't want it to pinch your o-ring as you push your piston in look up the inside and all I'm gonna do is just take this and push it down into the bore pressure to get it down in there but just take your time you just don't want to pinch your your o-ring you want to do it slowly then these two fit on the top and these are like springs this is kind of like a spring plate if you will you can see there's two of them I'm gonna wipe all the, the goo off of them these two go here and then we've got to press it and get that on and I think it actually goes like I had it before like that so you can see I got quite a bit of pressing to do and so that piston's not down in there but I'll get it in okay actually on this one you don't have to have a compressor I thought you would uh, spring compressor where you push this down when you got the piston all the way in if you put those in on the top there's enough room to get your snap ring in so I'm gonna snap the snap ring in and then I'll show you um, in fact I'm gonna turn it around like this right here which is a is good these don't have a hole through them so it's hard to use a a ring compressor because it generally has a rod that goes through the middle that's threaded and this thing doesn't have anywhere to put a rod through the middle that's threaded so what I'm going to do is some of this stuff is is not easy to do but you know what if it was easy everybody would do it it's just a matter of learning I've, I've built transmissions for many many years I hadn't built one in about 15 but in this particular case all these transmission shops are wanting three thousand dollars to do this job and I have a lift and I have the tools so why would I 
pay somebody else 3000 when I can do this and I can also make a video for you so you can learn um, how to do it. It's not real hard. You don't have to be a, a brain scientist to, uh, to do this. Well, this little O-ring here, or snap ring, is tough. All right, as you can see, I finally got it snapped in, and it just snaps around those two plates down. And you can see those plates, even once it's snapped, they're kind of loose. Then this plate here has a, a O-ring around it. I'm going to put a little, little juju on that. A little julep, as we used to call it in the car business. And uh, that's the thing about transmissions is in order to get good at it, you have to build them all the time in order to get fast at it, I should say. But you know what? Uh, it still is not right. This is supposed to be down before I put the snap ring on, so I'm going to have to pull it back out. Come on, Billy. Pull it together. All right, so I got it. I took it to a transmission shop. They compressed it for me and snapped that snap ring on, and the guy... Wasn't even going to charge me anything, but I gave him a $20 bill, but that was very nice of him. Anyhow, what I'm going to do now is, you can see, I'm going to start, it's got a wave plate that goes in first, which is a little thin plate that has a little wave in it. So I'm going to stick it in here first. And then it's got, uh, let's see how many, many friction plates, and it's got a thick plate on the top, so it's got one, two, three four, five, six friction plates. And you can see that they're burned. And the reason they're burned is because that uh, edge of it was messed up and the piston O-ring had gone bad. There's supposed to be six. So grab six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. I got exactly six. And I'm gonna grab the metal rings. Yeah. All right, so what we're going to do is drop that ring. You never use, never put the uh, friction plate on top of the wave washer. So you do that, you do that, 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 that. And you look in there, you can tell that you've got to go every other one that, that, so I'm going to have to have one more metal plate, I think I'm making like one, So I may have miscounted this thing. Look, there should be six friction plates. One, two, no, takes one more. So I don't have enough. These are not hurt, so I'm gonna pop this in. One more friction plate, and then this top plate and you can see the top plate on this one has that it's beveled on the outside because of course the bevel goes out flip that down in there just like that right there then you take this little snap ring and you're going to put the snap ring in just like this right here And that bad boy is complete and ready to go back in. And you can look in there and see that we are every other, every other one, and there's six friction plates in that. And uh, so I'm gonna, the other thing we've got is we've got some split rings. You can see that it had actual split rings right here. And when I mean split, they're, they've got a little split in them like that. So I've got some brand new split rings to go on there in my kit. They all came together, so there's two of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on and I'm gonna lube them up real good with Vaseline to hold them into place. Oh, 
and basically you just want to make sure that you get the the lip in the right spots you can see that they're split but when they're in like that they're not they're not split and you can put Vaseline on them kind of hold them in place and then there's a ring right there I've already got it in so we're basically ready to go with this the next thing I'm gonna do is take this I've drained the transmission there is a plug on it I'm gonna flip it over and take the pan off because I want to change the get the rest of the fluid out and change the um, uh, filter and then we're gonna put her back together yes we are all right so I've got the transmission I've drained as much as I could now I'm gonna pull the transmission pan off uh, change the filter clean it all out and put her put her back together so your bit to take the pan off is a star tool t25 and so we're going to easing it off and don't go crazy torquing on these things you just you go easy everything's moderation with the automatic transmission so i'm going to pull this off and i'm expecting to get a little fluid i hope not too much actually not you know, that's good so you can see that we got some metal in the pan, but we're going to clean that out, but it's not horrible. So they've got magnets in there, luckily, so it kind of pulls it all to that. And so we're going to put us a new gasket on, uh, change the filter, get the metal out of it, flip it back over, and put the rest of it right back together. When you can take this gasket, sometimes take a razor blade and kind of start going under it like that. And this one's going to cooperate which is real nice. If you just do this and break it loose it'll come right off on one piece. And you don't have to do any scraping. Nice cleaning job right there. And I'm going to zip this off but I'm not going to do anything with the valve body uh, they did send a kit like a another kit but I don't know that I'm gonna do anything with it that's what the filter looks like and there's usually fluid inside the back of it so I'm gonna let that fluid drain right here like that I'm gonna double check my kit make sure that it's not something I can put in without taking the valve. I've got to take the valve body out. I'm not doing it. And so, there you go. Have you ever seen that? Hold on. This right here is what the valve body looks like. You can see you've got all your solenoids to control it. There's where your filter is. There's a bolt there, a bolt there. And so, there she is. Alright, so I'm going to put the filter back on it. And what I'm going to use as a speed handle is what I call it. Uh, I always use speed handle when I'm handling uh, valve body stuff because even though this thing is metal, it's still somewhat delicate. You can see there's an O-ring right there. So you're just going to slip this back on here and put that bolt in, put the other bolt in and tighten it with your uh, speed handle because you can control the torque with your speed handle. and you can also go fast. The um, impact is inappropriate tightening. It's okay loosening, but snugging stuff back up is a no-no with the impact. See, so I can get my hand right there and kind of feel it. Good. Nice and tight. All right, so you can see I've got my new gasket back in place. I'm going to clean my pan and we're going to go back together. All right, so I've got the pan cleaned. You can see I pulled the magnets out, cleaned all the metal off of them, got them completely clean. So now I'm going to put her back together. So the way you do that, on the outside, I, I knocked the, the basic dust off of it, but I didn't completely clean it up. But basically the way you do it is you stick it back on there and get you a, a few bolts to get the party started, line your gasket up, 
same thing as we talked about before. Use your speed handle, but don't over. That way you can control how tight it is. Um, I'm just going to use this to kind of get everything all lined back up. And I can see the gasket inside here, so you gotta kind of push the gasket around and line it up a little bit here and there. I don't want this to fall in that fluid down there, but I'm not snugging anything yet. I'm just getting them, getting them kind of started, making sure that all of my gaskets line up. And I can see it, and it looks good. Now I'm going to put all my other bolts in, and then I'll start tightening. And what I'll do is a cross pattern. I'll tighten a little here, a little there, cross, 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 and then go all the way around one last time to make sure everything is nice and tight. Won't bore you with that, but that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so this drum fits, this part fits inside of that part. You can see that. There's a little ring there where I had to put the snap ring. So you basically turn this, turn this, turn this, line it up until you'll hear it bottom out more or less. There it is. So that's all the way in. Then this one, you can see that there's a, a part there and this got chewed up a little bit on the inside but not bad because it was where this was when it was coming apart. And I've cleaned it. There's no no loose um, stuff in there, but basically what you're going to do here is um, take this part and turn it until it bottoms out. You've got it lined up, and then this part fits on the top of that. And it's going to all lock together. And the new part, the A uh, drum, as I call it, goes through the biggest of the drums first. So it sticks in, it locks, and then you take this part and you have to line it up. You turn it until it all lines up and goes together. So it's going to be a little bit of a trick here, but I'm going to get it all together. And the other thing is you want to make sure that you're um, your rings don't fall through and what I'm talking about is your, you want to make sure that that stays in place, the other stays in place, so we'll try to line this up first. I think this actually locks together, but I'm not 100% sure, let's see, is there a place here? So I think I'm leaving out something, I think I've got to have I'm going to pull this drum back out so you can see. They appear to lock together. Well, okay, I see. This goes here. So, yeah, they lock together. So, there's actually teeth. If you look at your big drum, you can see there's teeth there. There's teeth there. So, those two are going to lock together. So, basically, this goes on top first. That locks in place. That locks together. Stick that there. Now you would take this, make sure you've got your needle bearing there. You can see I hit the needle bearing and knocked it out of place. Keep on going until it. And you got to thread this thing where it goes into every clutch and it'll bottom out, and it just did. So now we're going to put this on top. And now we've got to thread this one until it goes into all the clutches on the big drum and bottoms out. And I feel like that that's correct right there. That feels right. So when I do this, it should fit inside there. Oh, I see. And this has a, it actually has a tab on it, so it won't go in every spot. If this is correct, if it's all correct, you can put your snap ring in. If it's not correct, you cannot put your snap ring in. So it's going to be the smaller of these two snap rings. So it's this one. 
this is the one that doesn't have the ends on it. It's just got little little slices, if you will. But thus far, this does not appear to be in enough that I can get the. So I think this drum right here has got to go one more in. That's enough. And ideally, you would have a holder with a hole in it that this could fit on. It's still not enough. Um, I wonder if I can come up with something with a hole in it. All right. So here we go. I'm going to take this, stick this in, wave washer, metal, friction, metal, friction, metal, friction, metal, friction. Metal, Make sure that thing's still recording. Metal. Friction. Metal. Friction. And last but not least, metal. And this metal, you can see, has a bevel top. So you gotta put it flat side down. Okay, so that's definitely correct. Snap ring in place. Boom, snap ring went right in. So I know that's correct. Next, this should go completely down so we know that's down so same thing we're gonna go wave wave washer metal friction metal And this last one is thick, but it's not different on the top or the bottom. So I'm going to put the unused side down. All right, I'm going to put my snap ring in there. Which is going to be in. Make sure these two snap rings are not different thicknesses. And they are. So I wonder if that may be the problem. The thicker one, I think, is the bottom. And the thinner one is the top. So that could be the answer. There's two snap rings that are basically the same circumference, but they're different thicknesses. So then this lines up with that. And then looky there. Expect that snap ring to just snap in. You're gonna to have to to work for it. That's the way your unit looks right there when you got it back together. Okay, so this drum. You can see this drum has a bearing there. It has two seals right there. So this is gonna slip in here. And you line all these up. If 
feels like it went all the way to the bottom to me. Okay. So now this end goes towards that and you can see that bearing rides on that little race right there. So you're gonna stick this in, in, turn, 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 and line those gears up. April the 22nd 2015 and I'm driving my car I just put it for sale on Craigslist today new seat covers on the front transmission repaired top works so friends this I'm assuming that you know how to put the transmission back together as we took it apart so I didn't go any further because this video is already pretty long but just reverse the process, put it back in, and that did fix it. And you don't have to tear the whole thing apart. You can just go to that center part and just fix that drum, clean it up, clean it, put a fresh filter, fresh, fresh fluid in it, and it works. So I finally got it done, got the top working, put new seat covers on it, and I was able to sell it for a big whopping $8,000. But it is gone now and good riddance. And I hope this video helps somebody get their Jaguar fixed.